She told me I had the baseline yeah. And everything will be fine oh, yeah. She told me I had the sound of the drums Drums To set the mood and foundation She told me I had the baseline Everything will be fine She told me I had the sound of the drums Drums To set the mood and foundation Hey there sweet souls, how are you? It's your Force Fairy here, nice to see you again. Well, for today's pick a card, we are asking What area of my life requires more attention. So for today's pick a card, take a look at each deck. Which one are you drawn to? This deck with, and that's Malachite, a Malachite heart. This one with the Moonstone heart, or this one with the Sunstone heart. So take a moment to like take a look at each deck or the Malachite, Moonstone, or Sunstone. Pick your deck, follow your intuition, and I will see you in your reading. Hey there, pile number one. How are you? It's your force fairy here. Nice to see you again. Well, today's pick a card question is, what area of my life requires more attention. What? I already see it. Oh, what area of my life requires more attention? Let's get the intent into these cards and we'll see what area of your life, pile number one, requires more of your attention. <clears throat> what area of pile number one's life requires more of their attention. What area in pile number one's life requires more attention? Let's take a look. What area of pile number one's life needs more attention. What area of pile number one's life needs more of their attention? Let's get the tarot out. What area of pile number one's life needs more attention. What area of pile number one's life needs more attention? All right, second tarot deck. <clears throat> what area of pile Number one's life needs what area of pile? Number one's life needs more of their attention. What area of pile number one's life needs more of their attention? I'm excited about this one. What area, last tarot deck, what area in pile number one's life needs more of their attention? Oh, that one right there. What needs more of their attention? Pile number one.
And the final deck, which is this little, I think it's called the uh, white fox. Now I've got a red fox around here, but I haven't seen a white one. I would love that. Those are spirit animals, apparently. What area? This one. Just pile number one. need to pay more attention to or it requires more attention what area so let's let's find out pile number one let's find out together now this is an interesting image it's a raven and it looks like he's got a monocle and a newspaper so <clears throat> let's take a look this is a very interesting little deck and this one says apprenticeship, information, learning, and a warning. Interesting. Learning, information, and warning. So, pile number one. <clears throat> Pile number one, learning, and it's a warning though, a warning as to what you're learning, as to who you're learning from. Let's get more information. Universal abundance. Universal abundance. I think this is going to... <clears throat> Give us more information as to what area of your life, pile number one, requires more of your attention. Universal abundance. Let's take a look. Great abundance is yours, pile number one, if you reach for it. Abundance is within. Choose to acknowledge it. As you recognize the abundance around you, it will increase. This is a time to harvest the abundance within you. Abundance flows your way. Be open to it. To be abundant is to experience the joy of creation. So, universal abundance really speaks about the abundance being within. And as the word also, the... Um, the kingdom of God lies within, which is a universal law, truth. Okay. So when this is a warning card, when this is, and it's about information, which I find very interesting, that it is in fact about what it is you're learning, because it spoke about learning, information, and a warning. Are you learning what could be falsities about abundance? Are you adhering to or learning about and seeing because you've read about it, you've thought about it, you have experienced it, and that is that lack mindset that you cannot. And this is a warning. This raven is warning you against I'm, I'm going to say the powers that be that want to keep you um, in this state of, of lack. I'm really feeling a state of lack, and yet here we have the universal abundance. And the abundance lies within your totem animal. Yeah, look at that. Bear. Integrity. Compassion. Clarity. Self-reflection. Contemplation. Single-mindedness. Self-discipline. Prosperity and enterprise. Could this be that you want, that the area that requires more attention is in fact your internal work, is in fact that which you think about yourself, being aware of the thoughts that go through your mind, and there's hundreds of thousands that go through your mind in a, in a waking day, like just an unbelievable amount of, of thoughts. Becoming aware of those thoughts, are they of abundance, are they prosperity, or are they of lack? This is... The question I have for you, pile number one. Betraying or jealousy, 21. 
and it's right beside that warning card, 21. <clears throat> Where is that one? This book. 21. Let's take a look together. Betraying, and in parentheses, jealousy. Are you experiencing the dark side of love? Take the time to assimilate betrayal. In those desperate moments, what we loved in others appear with absolute certainty. Observe it and do it yourself, keeping your awareness. In this attentive presence, grow, evolve, and become yourself. I'm almost feeling with these two cards and really sitting beside this raven with the monocle on, that you're betraying yourself with lack thoughts. You're betraying yourself with envy. They have so much. I have so little. They have a great job. I do not. They have a, a loving husband or wife and, I, and mine cheated on me. They have great kids that are successful and mine are not. Whatever those envious, jealous feelings are that you are looking and comparing yourself to, just be aware of your self thoughts. Be aware of why you feel this way, what you are seeing in others that you do not see in yourself. I tend to look at um, really successful people and and they motivate me to want to be successful. You hear of these stories where they just grew up in a small little town, right? That there are other success stories that they had, you know, millions of dollars, you know, invested into them, whether it be through family, friends, you know, companies, whatever. But it's those little stories, the self-made, that you kind of go, yeah, I can do that. Yeah, that's exactly the success that I feel within. And then what does success mean to you? So the area, pile number one, in your life that needs more attention is your inner work, is your inner thoughts, what it is that you are thinking about yourself, about your abundance, about what it is you have and what it is you don't have. And it covers across the board, from your home, to your job, to your relationships, to your family. It covers right across the board. And I want you to be aware of how you think about yourself. Are you betraying yourself through jealousy of others rather than being you know very supportive and and hopeful as well as doing the work being single-minded self-discipline to get that prosperity to to build your enterprise the fairies a blessing of the grouping it looks like grouping fae again these Sometimes these um, very fancy um, text can throw me off. So this is 31. <clears throat> See, I thought it was a 51. It looks like a T, but I think it's a G. Grouping? Okay. There are fairies who dwell in one place all their long lives caring and protecting the guardians of the watchers and there and there are fairies that move on the old paths along the ley lines dragon lines energy paths of the planet these fairies walk these lines each solar return clearing and cleansing energy knowing where they must go and what they must do with this card they offer you the, their gift, that of knowing which path you need to walk and what you must do and where you must go. May there be no more confusion about your purpose. May each step this day, may each step this day feel filled with an inner calling and a mission. May you feel the energy rising up from below the earth to meet you and support you and may you know that your every footstep is a ritual, an act of offering to the planet. Let there be a simple deep knowing that everything you do this day has purpose and meaning and let fulfillment come to you in the places where you have felt empty and unsure. Let this blessing of the wanderers, the, it is a tea, troping, not grouping, that's funny, troping, 
fairies, who keep the ways of energy alive in the world, come to you this day and give you a true sense of life and your every footstep being valuable. And that really speaks to betraying yourself with thoughts of jealousy of what others have and what you don't. Know that you are here for a reason, that you are here. Whatever that means to you, you are here for a reason. That is for you to find what your purpose is, what your reason is. Why are you here on this earth at this time for this? What is your reason? Universal abundance comes when you go deep within and you realize that the kingdom of God lies within, that your perspective of your outside world really is the mirror image or the perspective the uh, uh, projection of how you feel inside. So how do you feel inside? Just know that these, and I'm saying troping fairies, want you to have a sense that your life and your every footstep is valuable. Your very breath is a gift to the trees. Absolutely. As someone who lives in the 100 acre woods, this I know. Knowing that your life, just as it is, is enough, is purposeful, is what you are meant to be doing, come to you. And if things are meant to change, then the troping fae will come to you and offer you their gifts so that you know which path you need to take. Fairy blessings of true path and deep purpose to you, bright soul. It's funny, I just had a, uh, a conversation with boy number two and three about, we want to do this experiment with plants. And that is, um, and, and even though I don't, it's an experiment. And these were the two Aries sun boys, Aries sun sons and talking beautifully and nicely and with love to one plant and seeing what happens and then um, harsh words and yelling and just this uh, very uh, aggressive negative energy to another plant and they will be separated from each other and we want to see which grows if speaking nicely and and this experiment we've seen it elsewhere but we want to do it and this really speaks to me about how you talk to yourself is is a block or will, will block you or will help you grow. So loving thoughts. And I know there's a lot of talk, especially in the spiritual world about, oh, I don't sugarcoat anything. And I'm very, you know, um, straightforward and, and I tell you the truth. That's great. And like a queen of swords, I offer the idea that a queen of swords does not make you feel insecure, does not make you feel stupid, does not make you feel um, insignificant. A, a true queen of swords tells you the truth in a way that she knows you can handle, you can absorb, and then you can apply to your life if you care to take her advice. This is what I'm really feeling with the blessing of the troping fairy, fae is that they are here to to help you. If you ask them, like angels, they were always there to help you, guide you on your path. If something feels off, if something doesn't feel right, you might not be on your true path. And that is where being curious, being playful and curious. Well, I'm just going to try this. I have never tried golf and I'm going to try golf. I've never tried, let's say, I don't know. I, I saw a video with um, a, I'm not sure if it's a like a glider and they just sort of sit suspended from this big kite. It's basically a glider's a big kite. And this, um, it was like a hawk sort of set down on his foot. And I just thought that would be, I have never gone up high in other than an airplane <clears throat> in the sky like that. And it's always, it makes me a little, un, it unnerves me. But at the same time, when I saw that video, I thought, wow, that is something. That is really an experience. And he got it on film that he could put up, you know, on YouTube here. So it's trying new things. I have never tried gliding and maybe I will love it. I've never tried scuba diving and maybe I'd love it. I've never tried dirt biking and maybe I'd love it. I don't know. And maybe I would not love it. <laughs> then I would say, I'm, I've tried it. I'm, that's not for me. I'm never doing that again. Who knows? This is who you are. 
discovering who you are is trying different things. That was one thing that my parents taught me was just try, just give it a try. Either you like it or you don't, whether it be food, whether it be an activity, whether it be a program, it doesn't even matter. Try it. How do you know until you try? I'm really picking up on you betraying yourself through looking at others, through the eyes of, of others. Well, they must have a great life. Like it's all of that Instagram life, that they must have a great life and I don't. That's betraying who you truly are when you compare yourself to others. That's what I'm really picking up for you, pile number one. And I converse with awareness. I got this for another pile the other day. This is a beautiful message about how, and it's very Queen of Swords for me. It's about how you communicate. It's about what you say, intonation, how you listen. Um, there it is, right there. It's, it's almost like it's already, it's ready for me. So, conversation is an art form. <clears throat> All in its own, pile number one. A balancing act of questions and answer, inquiry and insight, listening and hearing all that all at once. <clears throat> Combined with the variable aspects of speed, volume, gesture, body language, stress, rhythm, intonation, pitch, pausing and phrasing all within the constraints of language's ecosystem of conversations, dimensions of dialogue may vary depending on the context of how you are conversing and the relationship you have with the person you are conversing with. So I'm asking you, pile number one, when it comes to which area of your life that requires more attention, I believe it's how you speak to yourself. What it is that you ask yourself what it is how you ask yourself, what it is that you're asking, why are you asking it? This, these are the conversations you have in your head. These are the conversations you have about your universal abundance. Am I abundant? No, I'm not. They have this, I have that. They have this job, I have that. They look like that, I look like this. How are you conversing with yourself? And this card, it really speaks to me today about, um, being kind and would you the question I ask my kids is would you say that to someone else I, let's use stupid I don't like the word stupid I really don't and so when I hear one of my kids say you're stupid you're acting stupid would you say that to someone on the street would you say that to someone at school would you say that was to your family grandparents you know would you say that to someone else no then why are you saying it to yourself why are you saying it to your sibling if you would not say it to someone out in the street. So just being aware of how you converse, what you say to yourself. We are awake because we are alive, but being awake and being aware are not necessarily the same thing. You might not even be aware, pile number one, of how you speak to yourself. Our senses allow awareness to integrate with understanding when we utilize our own idealized intelligence in how we communicate, express and converse with all we meet, not just friends or those in the inner circle, but all that we meet. So my question to you is pile number one. If you would not say those things to someone you would meet on the street, please do not say them to yourself. See how rich and how full your life is with the abundance that lies within. Do you have your health, right? The first thing. I'm breathing. I have my health. Take a big breath in and a sigh of relief that I woke up today. Like that in itself, I am alive. That in itself is abundance when so many people do not wake up from their bed. Having said that, how do I speak to myself every single day? I don't want to get up. Then don't. I want to stay in bed. I got to get up. I have to go to work. Okay. Then get in the shower, get dressed. Make yourself look super cute. Male or female, does not matter. Get yourself all cleaned up and go to work with this sense of pride. Even if you do not like your job, find another that you would enjoy. Um, I was a retail worker and a lot of people do not like retail, but I loved it because I got to talk to so many different people in a day, find out what it is, why they're here, what they're looking for. Can I help you? Of course I can, I can dress you. I can dress anybody, anybody, but anybody. And I loved the work. I loved the job. I look back and wonder how many 
um, just disgruntled people I dealt with in a very pleasant, kind, and genuine way that they turned around and said, I've had a bad day, my apologies, no worries. I'm not offended. I don't get offended, so it's okay. I, I, can, I can step a mile in your shoes and I can understand. This started with me talking nicely to myself so then I was able to talk to nicely to others. This is what I'm really picking up for you, pile number one, is that the area of your life that you really need to put more focus in is how you talk to yourself. Let's see what the tarot says. Judgment, you're waking up to this fact. Look at that. And, and this is, um, oh, praying mantis. I was almost going to say cricket. <clears throat> But it's a praying mantis, the hermit, going deep within to find, really, your universal, I almost said spiritual abundance in the Nine of Cups. The Nine of Cups, your wish fulfillment. And as this, and you see the white bear, as this bear, it's like a spirit animal, is looking towards what it is that is your wish fulfillment. Do you know? Ask yourself. Let's see what the the world, an ending of an, old, of an old way of being, and I believe it's an old way of talking to yourself in a brand new beginning. Yes, because look, those thoughts have been hurting your heart, I think for a very long time, pile number one. And it's almost like, do you see how this nine of wands, you're almost there, you're almost at this, this karmic cycle coming to an end, but do you see how this figure is looking at how many times have I said that I wasn't beautiful, that I wasn't intelligent, that I wasn't, I don't know, talented, that I wasn't. How many times? And it's almost like the walls are up against your own mind. And you are taking a leap of faith. We have the world and the fool. Look at that. And in between, the three of swords and the nine of wands. So you're almost there, seeing, recognizing, and acknowledging that, yeah, I don't talk very nicely to myself. I, I'm so sweet and nice to everyone else, but not to myself. Why? Why, why, why? And that's what you, the, the awareness, the awareness of how you talk to yourself, that requires more of your attention day to day. It's an everyday thing. Let's take a look at the last. Look, you have it twice. The Three of Swords. And do you see, it's a warning card. He's pointing his finger at, it's come out of two decks. And being patient with, and you see how she's looking, that pile number one, with this awareness, is going to change. And look at, you want to talk about universal abundance, we got the Ten of Pentacles right here. That when you change the way you talk to yourself, you will see changes in your real world environment curiosity with the page of wands learning how and, and again and for pile number one I, I almost challenge you to do the plant just get little plants just get little seedlings even a bean will do it right get a bean get a pea get something and plant them and talk all the all the negative what you say to yourself say to the plant okay and then talk lovingly to the second plant and just see what happens and then know that is proof to you. Know that that's why you're stuck, why you're um, not moving forward, why you can't get out of these mind traps because of the way you speak to yourself, which is breaking your heart. Just saying. Now, let's get to the tarot and see what this... Um, co-creator. I'm just going to say, because I feel like I, when I read from their little guidebooks, it's like their wisdom coming into the read. The fact that these cards have come out is completely spirit, but judgment, mercy, release, revival, oh, and forgiveness. Absolutely forgiving yourself for not being very nice, not speaking very nice, not thinking very nice thoughts or very helpful or encouraging thoughts, forgiving yourself for doing that. Fields of dandelions at the end of their cycle scatter their seeds into the winds. They softly rise into the sky like souls ascending into the heavens. It is time for you to release feelings of sadness, 
of guilt, of regret, oh, about your past. Know that every beautiful misstep and setback has been necessary to guide you to the significant stage of your journey. The weight you carry served you to a point, but now, it, but it may now be holding you back. Yes, release this burden and or release this burden to enable you to move forward wholly unhindered. The judgment card suggests that you are being called to fulfill your highest potential, but you must listen closely to hear the messages. The praying mantis is a symbol of mindfulness and meditation. Embrace these practices to tune into a higher frequency and achieve understanding of your new purpose. Now that is, that is what <laughs> your spirit guides really want you to know. And this is practical application, which I love about these cards, is that it is telling you to meditate, to listen to the messages that are being given to you from your angels, from your spirit guides, from your ancestors, but also listen to the messages from your higher self. Listen to how you speak to yourself. If your higher self says, you've got this, you can do this little enterprise, you can start, let's say, um, you make candles or you make jewelry. Let's start something up on Etsy. Oh, there's a million jewelry makers. Mine don't be any different. Stop yourself. Stay no. No one makes jewelry the way you do, pile number one. No one makes candles the way you do, pile number one. No one makes sweaters or dishcloths or socks the way you do, pile number one. And that is what you need to really focus in on how you speak to yourself. Beautiful, the hermit. I love these cards. They're not only beautiful, but the images of them. The hermit card. Introspection, solitude, reflection, discernment. In a coastal temperate rainforest, a Kermo bear stands at the edge of a pool, his white fur a symbol of spiritual wisdom he's attained over time. Peering down at the reflection in the still water, he sees an old friend peering back. The hermit invites you on a path of introspection and self-discovery. That's the message. Look closely at your strengths and weaknesses. Universal abundance is what really set this, this the theme for this uh, pile. Pile number one is that where your attention require, where what area of your life requires more attention is your introspection, is going deep within, hermit style. Look closely at your strengths and weaknesses. Determine what you value and believe and what you love and fear. Know oneself, knowing oneself is key to living harmoniously in this world. The hermit self-worth isn't dependent on outside recognition, possessions, or the opinions of others. Everything we seek from the external world can be found within universal abundance. Absolutely. Have the, have the distractions of everyday life caught you in their grip? Find a quiet space where you can be alone and an old friend is waiting and that's your soul, your true self. Pile number one. Whew, this is a good one. This is a deep one. I'm feeling it really finding who you are. Pile number one, the Nine of Cups. Let's take a look at this one. The Nine of Cups. Satisfaction, luxury, fulfilled wishes. And this is where you're with introspection, with the hermit, with judgment, waking up and feel and really feeling and really forgiving how your thoughts have made you feel sad and defeated, forgiving yourself for doing that to yourself and saying, hello, old friend. Now we are ready for these wish fulfillments. A sea lion sits contently on a rock slab, basking in the warm light of the day. This um, pinup, pinipped may appear idle and, and obstinate, but below the surface it moves with graceful enthusiasm. Across the water lie nine oyster shells. Although eight remain sealed, one has opened, revealing a shiny pearl. This iridescent gem is an omen of good fortune. The Nine of Cups is known as the Wish Card, 
and is a positive indication that your hopes and dreams will be coming true when you take that leap of faith and it's right above the Fool card and right below the Page of Wands. This is curious about who you are. This is curious about, can I take that leap of faith? The answer is yes, your wish fulfillments. And you see how with this curiosity, with this Page of Wands, it's right beside being patient with the Ten of Pentacles that when you discover universal abundance within the Ten of Pentacles will show up in your outside world. Absolutely. To put the walls down, you're almost there. When you find who you truly are, when you listen to the conversations you have with yourself, when you stop hurting with these painful thoughts of who you should have been and you're not, who you're going to be but can't, these are all painful, hurtful thoughts that could be, have been programmed in you through your family, through media, through your schooling, through your friendship group, through your work environment. And for you to really to spend time by yourself, hermit, go into hermit mode, and listen to how you talk to yourself, what it is you say, what it is you mean. And then to switch that, because you control your thoughts, you control your emotions, you control your environment from the inside out. And that's what Universal Abundance talks about. So stop betraying yourself by looking at others as so much better. No one's better than you. That's you, pile number one. No one's better than you. And that's what I see for you, pile number one. And I'm sure I'll see you again. Take care from your forest fairy. Bye for now. Hey there, pile number two. How are you? It's your forest fairy here. Nice to see you again. Pile number two. Today's pick a card is asking the question, what area of my life requires more attention? So let's find out pile number two. What area of your life requires more of your attention? What area of pile number two, what area of their life requires more attention? Well, let's find out pile number two. What area of your life requires more of your attention? Nope. What area of your life requires more of your attention? These cards are so sticky with the humidity, but I am not complaining at all. What area of your life, pile number three, requires more of your attention? That one really wanted to come out. What area of your life, pile number two, requires more of your attention. What area of your life, pile number two, requires more of your attention? What area of your life, pile number two, requires more of your attention? What area of your life pile number two requires more of your attention getting the tarot out what area of your life pile number two requires more of your attention What area of your life requires more of your attention? I see it right there. Look at that. One, two, and one more. These cards are so sticky. What area of your life pile number two requires more of your attention last tarot deck 
What area of your life, call number one, requires more of your attention? All right, and the final deck. I've been really enjoying this little deck. It's just images and then a couple sort of key words and it really, they're really kind of setting my intuition on fire, which I really enjoy. All right, let's take a look at, speaking of, of that first little card. Interesting. <laughs> Look at that. Questions, question, 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 question. Let's find out what the keywords are with this image. It's almost like pile number two has questions. Questions, questions, questions. can't find it. That's interesting, isn't it? Because there's no numbers, there's no sort of name that goes along with these images. It's just the image. And I might have to just uh, do a free-for-all, right? And just take a good look at it and, and tell you what spirit's seeing. And I can't find it. Interesting. <laughs> I almost want to double check if I've got, if it's even in here. It's got to be in here. How could I miss it? Oh, the kids have been saying that these reeds are long, and I don't disagree with them. However, I'm now really curious as to why this card, and it could be that it's in, not in the book here, right? Could very well be. It's got question marks. Question marks. I almost want to pull another one. Because it's not in here. So I'm wondering if it's, well, it's here for a reason. And yet I cannot find it in this little guidebook. So we're just going to move on and see what the question, what, like the question is, what area of your life needs more attention? Maybe you don't know it, pile number two. Maybe you have no idea. So I want to go right below and see if this will give us any indication. I respect the property of others. Property? Interesting. I respect the property of others. That's very specific. Interesting. Let's take, I know I can find this one. I respect the property of others. <laughs> it's funny. I will laugh if I can't find the property of others for. I just said, if I can't find any of these cards, the whole table, I will laugh. But I respect the property of others. Number four. The word property has multi, it has multifaceted layers of interpretation. It can define a quality or trait belonging to another person, an effect that an object has on another object or on the senses, something that is owned or possessed or a virtue. In viewing, the notion of respecting the property of others has an ideal has an ideal to embody. Looking at the layers of the word can assist you in getting the root of its spiritual context. The properties we possess, spiritually, mentally, physically, or emotionally, and the properties we own are two sides of one coin. As an inner spirit reflects to the outer world, 
what manifests and what we surround ourselves with in the sensory space are a direct reflection of the invisible intrinsic force within us. By this same token, we also reap what we sow. So every action, inaction, good deed, or use of poor judgment will find us in time. Interesting. In embodying the ideal of respect, we are reminded of the first ideal to honor virtue. In particular, its pillar of prudence. By maintaining a balanced heart and mature mind, we are called to respect the property of others. Because there is no other and we respect the inner and outer effects of one's other, this good karma reflects right back to us. By practicing good judgment and exercising reason, we are reminded to see the properties of each individual from both a metaphorical and literal perspective as a resonant song within our life symphony. Another is anything but and other than other. There is no separation, save for the illusion of the material world. A respectful person is a virtuoso of virtue, as you are confident in divine providence, and by being a trustworthy friend to all, you live in alignment with honesty in all of your decisions. Now, as I see this card right below, the card we could not find, the question then law of continuity. This is very much about what goes around comes around. The respect, I respect the property of others, very much talks about the virtues that you hold true. And now it is confirmed with the law of continuity that what goes around comes around. So are you curious about how your outside world is a reflection of what goes on within about your virtues. Are you, is the area of your life, pile number two, that needs more of your attention? Is that having to do with your virtues? The ones that you were raised with and maybe the ones that you are now discovering as an adult? Law of continuity. Let's take a look at this one. I, I know this one well. It has come up several times. And it's a beautiful law of continuity. Purpose and reason are connected to all that surrounds you. Absolutely. Continuity and balance. A thread of strength brings reason and understanding. Spiritual continuity provides us with a lifeline and with safety. Higher and lower selves merge. The understandings of two realities and two worlds blend. Connections are made. Linkages are found and bridges are located within. The bridge from the spirit, your soul, into this 3D world. The law of continuity, purpose and reason are connected to all that surrounds you. And the respect of the property of others is respecting not just the feelings, the thoughts, of others, the energy of others, but also what they have earned, what they have in the material world. That. Your totem animal talks about discretion, perception, transformation, hypersensitivity, ingenuity, talent, astuteness, artfulness, effectiveness. Hmm. I'm curious. Deception. Is this why we couldn't find this card in the little guidebook? I'm wondering when we have deception. Hmm. Let's take a look. That is number 33. That's a Jesus number. I want to read that for you. 33. I know that one. I'm beginning to remember these. 
33. This is from the angel numbers. Master Jesus and his angels are with you. This is a sacred time for growth and healing. So, as Master Jesus, with that 33 really standing out to me, has said, this is a time for you, for growth and healing. So that could very well be where your, what area of life requires your attention. It could be in your growth, in your healing. There could have been others that did not see your future, that did not treat you as you wanted to be treated, as you treated them. There could be deception. People deceived you that they really spoke to your trusting nature then to be just for you to find out that they were actually um, deceiving you. And the law of continuity, the law of continuity really is an interesting card. Reason being is because it speaks of your purpose and reason how all is connected, how spirit is connected to the uh, material world, how we are connected to each other, that if someone has hurt you, are you pulling in, are you disappearing, are you cannot be found until you go through this healing? Let's find out with this 33. This card here, 33. Deception. Something is causing love to run away. In fact, that energy is retreating, as I said, folding back into itself to protect itself. It cannot do otherwise. In short, you will be exhausted and you won't see even the shadow of love anymore. I really feel this is others who have deceived you because what you feel inside shows up in your outside world and then that's a confirmation for you to continue to feel that way on the inside. See, I knew that would happen. See, um, I can't trust anyone. If these are the, the inner thoughts, just know that with the law of continuity, with your connection to, from spirit to material, know that you can manifest whatever it is within you, it will show up on the outside. So when this card of respect the property of others, respect where they're at, respect their virtues, respect their thoughts, ideas, you can respect it at the same time. You don't have to adhere to it. You don't have to live by it. You don't even have to be around it. If people are deceiving you, take a look at how you deceive yourselves. What do you tell them when you feel something that's off about, let's say, a coworker, a a spouse or a family member, a friend, and you're just, something's off. They're not telling me the truth. Believe that. Believe it. Believe those feelings. That's your intuition speaking. It's perception, discretion, perception, transformation. You could be a hypersensitive soul where you really feel the energies of others before they even open their mouth. Now, see what the fairies have. A blessing to undo an unfortunate, I see, unfortunate, I can't read this, that one letter, I think it's a, is it a T? I'm going to see the guidebook and just 15, and because these, this font, those, that fancy font is really I have a problem with, I'm not going to lie. Geis? Yeah, G-E-I-S, Geis. Okay, this blessing will help undo the impact of an unfortunate pattern within your life. Geis is what the Celts believed we were born with, a theme or a story that would be told over and over in our lives, gifted to us by the goddess Ehrenhod, often seen as a curse rather than a blessing. So when we have these patterns, these raveled up bits of our life that we seem to get caught up in and tangled within, like a web we keep getting pulled back into, the fairy can help unravel it and come to a kind of peace with it. Okay, so this could very much be talking about, like I know it's, it's speaking of 
um, old Celt, but th th this just shows to me that this is something that people have been dealing with, have been battling their whole lives, and that is programming. I see this as programming, what you've been told, um, what you've been, whether it be through your family, through your schooling, through the institutions you've been involved in, um, let's say you're in the military, what you've been told over and over and over again, it then speaks to how you've been deceived, that someone might have told you, you'll never amount to anything, you won't make anything, you can't make, let's say, a million dollars, a hundred, not even a hundred K. And this is what you've been told. And so this is what you believe. And what you believe then becomes your reality to then with that, it's almost like the wheel of fortune, right? That, that cyclical, and then it proves to you in your real world, see, you'll never amount to anything. You still have, after 15 years, a minimum wage job. This, you'll, how are you gonna get to a million this way? As, and I'm just using money as an example. You could be told that you're not talented, that you don't have a singing voice, that you don't um, have an eye for architecture. Whatever this, whatever it means to you, whatever that negative, and I'm picking up from this from this fairy message, that has that sort of you're born with, right? What it is that people say about you right from the day you were born. You've always been a, you were a troubled baby. You were a loud, like, you know, whatever. You were a, a boisterous kid, you talk too loud, whatever it, whatever your story has been told, I want you, pile number two, again, with the area of your life that requires your attention, your, I want you, pile number two, to pay attention to the stories that you tell yourself and that others have told you that you now believe. Can you transform these stories? Can you see your ingenuity, your talent? Can you see your artfulness? Can you see the effect that you have on other people? Are you able to see? The fairies can assist us in lightening up regarding our challenges. They can help us find pathways that are less rocky and thorny and come into a relationship with our own themes and stories. In this way, we come to self-understanding and acceptance in that we begin to activate the power within our story. And with that, the fairies know that their gift to you of undoing unfortunate stories has begun. Be uplifted, for we all have our story and challenge, and we all have troubles to face. And with this gift comes the way through to making the very most of what could be considered unfortunate. You will, with the blessings of the fairies and your own courage and spirit, make it through the other side, which is understanding. My grandmother used to always say, with understanding comes compassion. So with understanding where these stories came from, with understanding who told them to you, with understanding why they might have done so, with understanding comes compassion. Have compassion for yourself, for being put through that, sweet soul. Pile number two, compassion for the other person, for they might not know. They might know what they've been doing, but they might not know because that's how they were taught. And this goes back generations. Now, moving forward, just becoming aware and understanding the stories that have been told to you, whether they be uh, gender stories, whether they be racial stories, religious stories, and I don't mean the positive, I mean the ones that, t that get you in that fearful state of I cannot, rather than I can, get you in a state of fear, and stress rather than joy and exuberance. Tarot, let's get to the tarot, the Eight of Pentacles. You're working on this. Oh, you're working on your confidence. Look at that, the Queen of Wands and the Ace of Wands. I feel, pile number two, you, you are already well aware of the stories that have been told you that are not true, that you have been deceived and you don't know why. I'm beginning to see that now. Why? Why would my parents tell me that I'm not good at, you know, singing or 
guitar or skating or whatever it is. Why would they say that? Maybe to protect you. Maybe so that it's, it's, it's better for you to hear from someone who loves you than from complete strangers that you're no good at playing the guitar, as an example. And yet, you, go, you get the bravery, you go to a gig, and people are telling you, you're amazing, you're awesome. So then you wonder, did they really, like, why did they tell me this? Why? Why was I left with this idea that I'm not smart, and yet I got into an Ivy League school? Why I, you know, like, there's a lot of questions here in just the, the oracle that you might be asking yourself. And so I think the, where you're um, in the areas of your life that you need, to, that requires your attention, I really think what requires your attention, pile number two, is the story that you've been told your whole life. Five of Swords. You're determined to keep working. I want to see what's above here. At looking into the future. I want to see, go back down here. Determined. Yeah. To I am. This is Aries energy. To really step into that emperor energy. I am. The ending of with the ten of swords. Interesting. We have the king of wands the king and queen of wands with this ace of wands right here. And the emperor, very Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius energy. Let's this fire, that's your inner fire, the truth, the ace of swords. We have both the ace of wands, the ace of swords. What is your truth? Pile number two. What is it that you have been growing and waiting to come to fruition? And again, this very, the Two of Swords makes me go back to this card of, I don't know, I can't see, I can't see all the work, the Eight of Pentacles, the Seven of Pentacles, all the work that I have put into, let's say, a job, a talent, a skill, I don't see the results. But the truth of the matter is with this Ace of Swords that you know exactly that what you sent out there, whether it be content, whether it be, um, something that you've created, uh, an album, whatever it is to you, uh, that you will see. You just have to, this is a timing card. This is just being patient with the Seven of Pentacles, that those ships are going to come in with the Three of Wands. You're looking at the long game. You're not looking at instant gratification. Now, down here with this tarot deck, it I've got very much Leo and Aries on the table. And in between these thoughts, Ten of Swords, this is a de like a defeating um, energy of I can't and there's no point in continuing. But yet I see this, this skull of transformation. Very much reminds me of Scorpio energy of transformation. And ta taking these unfortunate stories, the unfortunate programming, and being determined to really have it fuel you for success is what I'm really seeing on the table for you, pile number two. So the question is, what area of my life needs more of my attention? I believe what needs more of your attention, and we'll, we'll, we'll get some details in the tarot here. What needs more of your attention is what you're working on, whether it be a talent, a skill, uh, a product, whatever it is that you are working on with the Eight of Pentacles and the Seven of Pentacles. The Seven of Pentacles tells me that you are looking back at what you've done, why you've done it, what it is, what's what's driving you to do this, okay, and then working on it. At the same time, you could be getting, whether it be from within or from outside sources, um, almost like this, this debilitating sort of doubt and um, why would you do that? Why would you continue on? It hasn't worked this, you know, up until this point. You're almost there. You're almost there with the Seven of Pentacles, the Queen of Wands and the Ace of Wands and the King of Wands. This fire corner right here speaks to me about how you are finding your confidence and bravery to continue on with this great idea, this new concept, this new um, skill, product, whatever that means to you. Not to be confused by it not showing up or having instant um, success, but just to be patient. These are waiting cards, waiting for your ships to come in, waiting for the plant to grow, for what it is that you are 
um, creating. And the truth, the fact of the matter is, you've got truth and clarity. But because this sword is down in this deck, it very much speaks to me about the sacrifices. And look at all these mountains in the background. You have climbed mountains to get to the point that you are at pile number two. And so where you need to put more focus, the area of your life is what you're working on, is your confidence to really stand behind whatever it is, product, service that you are creating, that you really need to believe in it and become the emperor, that bossing up energy, that big boss energy of I am Aries. Aries does not give up. And if Aries is knocked down, if Aries fails, Aries gets back up and learns from those mistakes. Okay, well, I'm not going to do that again. And where can I go moving forward? That's the beauty of Aries is that they, you can't, they don't stay down. <laughs> they really don't. They get back up and they try again. They'll do something different or they'll um, take a completely different route. All right, let's get some Eight of Pentacles. I want to take a look at these. Eight of Pentacles. Discipline, productivity, repetition. Through focus and skilled craftsmanship. This is exactly what I was saying, that the area that requires more of your attention is on your skilled craftsmanship, the diligent beaver begins construction on its dam. Its hard work, this hardworking creature demonstrates that it's possible to alter the course of rivers even though they are mighty or have flowed for ages. If you are working towards developing a skill, this card is a positive sign. Remember, mastery is possible with patience and repetition. Beautiful. Now I want to look at the seven. The seven of pentacles. This the Seven of Pentacles. This card indicates that you are working hard towards a long-term goal. Absolutely, your future will, your future self will be grateful for the time, effort, and energy you are expending in this moment. Harvest, review, and future rewards as both the Three of Wands and the Seven of, of Pentacles speaks about. Let's get to this fire. The Queen of Wands. This is really telling me that you need to focus on your skills, on your, on whatever it is that you are working on. The, your craftsmanship. Ace. Let's do the Ace first. The Ace of Wands. Innovation, flowing ideas, vigor. The warm winds of inspiration whirl around you, energizing your creative spirit. If you listen closely, you'll hear the muses call, follow the trail of color foliage, her leaves, she leaves in her wake. Her butterfly messengers will help guide the way. If you've been waiting for an opportune moment to begin a creative endeavor, this card suggests that the time has come. And with both the king and the queen and the emperor, these, these fire elements, this energy of get to it, you have you have worked on it, you've practiced, whatever this means to you, that this old story, it does not apply to you. It does not apply to you. They were deceiving you. You are talented. You will be successful. You have put in the work. Beautiful. King of Wands, visionary, guidance, and the big picture. The King of Wands resides above the weeds, so it's able. he's able to see a clear path from beginning to end. With swift confidence, he executes a strategy to manifest his vision. Let's go up to the Queen. The Queen of Wands is courage, expression, and self-actualization. A ladybug opens her vibrant shell to reveal transparent wings. She knows exactly who she is and hides herself from no one. Her inner and outer beauty captures the, the admiration of others. The miracles below symbolize the fiery passion she brings into this world. This queen is exactly who she appears to be. She encourages you to be open, to share your true self to the world. The light of life is bright, but brief. Don't spend your precious time hiding. That brings me back up to that card. Who am I? Aries says, I am. Not only do you know who you are, you know the truth, your truth. You know that it is the time is right for you to be brave and take on 
that which you've been practicing, that which you've been working on, that which you have grown and created. It's time for you to come out. It's time for you, for not only for you to respect the property of others, but for others to respect your property, your ideas, your skills. Pile number two. The area of your life that requires more attention is your skill, your abilities, your mastery, what it is that you've mastered. That requires more of your attention to come out. As the Queen of Wands, as the King of Wands, and the Emperor all indicate it's time for you to release that which is that you've been working on, whatever that means to you. And I look forward to seeing it. That's what I see for you, pile number two. And I'm sure I'll see you again. Take care from your force fairy. Bye for now. Hey there, pile number three. How are you? It's your force fairy here. Nice to see you again. Pile number three. The question for today's pick a, pick a card reading is what area of my life requires more attention? What area of my life requires more attention? So we're going to put the intent into each deck here. What area of pile number three's life requires more attention? What area? Pile number three's life requires more attention. Well, I'm going to take this one that was face down and I'll pick the one up off the floor. I'm going to take note of it. And it was number 30, a blessing of Litha. Interesting. I almost want to read just a little bit of that now. It was number 30. So let's just get a gist of what went to the floor. Because that could be an area of your life. The fairy gift of the midsummer energies for joy, friendship, and the flowering of life's bounty. Hmm. This gift of Lithus energy is a blessing and so to you this day comes a celebration and a gathering with friends if there are none on your horizon take steps to ensure you treat yourself lovingly and well this day and feast instead with the fairies eat joyously and well share a conversation with a friend old or new smile at a stranger say a kind word or two unasked for and feel the energy of the fairy pour down upon you. It is a blessing that will see you connect with flowers and the natural world and feel uplifted by the interactions with nature. You will feel a part of it all, and the day will be long and good and sweet and filled with unexpected joys and kindness. Well, isn't that maybe pile number three? that you need to pay more attention to, treating yourself with joy and kindness. Treating yourself. Have you been putting yourself last on the list, pile number three, of your own list? Because that one flew out and on the floor and right side up. I did take the fairy that fell on the table um, face down, so. I think that's a sweet little message. Okay, so I gotta, I've been putting that <laughs> into these. Let me just get that out. All right. What area of pile number three? What area of their life does pile number three need to um, pay more attention to? Yeah, that requires pile number three's attention. What area of pile number three's life requires, I'm gonna take the top one, more attention. Let's find out what area of pile number three's life requires more 
of their attention. That one felt. I'm going to take that one. Let's get to the tarot. I love these tarot cards. They're a little bit on the bigger side, however. I have really been enjoying them. All right, what area of pile number three's life requires more of their attention? We'll go to the next tarot deck. What area of pile number three's life requires more of their attention? What area of pile number three's life needs more of their attention? Now, if you notice a difference in lighting from that of pile number one or two, if you notice a difference in my voice is because we are doing pile number three at night. So all the kids are here and they're sleeping downstairs. And when I was recording during the day, it got, what happened was the uh, phone died. I had no idea, no idea. And I only have a recording. So, I decided, well, we're going to do a night read. So this is it. <laughs> I might do another one because we're going into town tomorrow. So having said that, what area of pile number three's life requires more of their attention? I'm seeing these ones. One, two, three, and one more, four. And then we'll get my little baby cards. I'm now looking through all my decks for baby cards for the next week's combination. I'm, I'm having a, a lot of fun going through old decks, I'll tell you that. All right, what area in pot, I see it right there in pot. Pile number threes. Life requires more of their attention. So let's take a look. First card out. I saw this one before. Interesting. This one I think is sage. Hmm. Let's just see what the keywords, because with this deck, it's literally just keywords. Purification, that's right. It's like a sage. Purification. Interesting. Purifying your aura, purifying your home, purifying your energy, purifying your thoughts, purifying your emotions, purification. So let's go to the next one and find out what area. The law of attraction. I haven't seen this in a while. All right. The law of attraction. Hmm. right there. We draw ourselves the reflection of what we give to others. And it's very interesting that the card that I read, the fairy card that fell out on the floor um, face up, I read about being kind, about this is very interesting because this is what it speaks of. The self must be invested in order for gains to be made. This is the law of attraction. What is needed is always drawn to us. We attract what we are already to have. We attract what we are already to have. We attract for growth and learning experience. We draw in to share and to expand ourselves. A card of seeking, of opening up to the needs of the soul and recognizing that the answers are all within. This speaks to me 
pile number three about you purifying again with this first card out as I said your thoughts your emotions your aura because the law of attraction is to really not just imagine and do nothing about it not just to wish upon a star but the law of attraction really speaks about having everything you could possibly imagine everything you could even desire beyond what you could conceive as a desire already within you already have it this is powerful stuff dolphin oh i love this one playfulness enjoyment celebration harmony joy togetherness care love and compassion this is what that theory number 30 i'm not going to forget the number um talked about of really being celebrations celebrating with friends with family cel and if you don't have any events to go to celebrate with yourself celebrate yourself take yourself out eat beautiful amazing food celebrate nature celebrate the stars celebrate this is what dolphin speaks of i want to go up here contemplation Hmm. contemplation I've seen this one before and it's I never noticed it's a lighthouse shedding light right over that moon that of illusion oh I remember this one I said it was O2 oh, I just thought of it again because I saw it again zero two and it's actually 20 yes I remember this one from a previous read all right all right all right I did. I'm not going to make that mistake again. Okay. Contemplation. Within the Taoist doctrine, this hexagram is a whole represent as a whole represents the world view of the wise man Quan. Is objectus attention, not limited by the ego. In practice, it is meditation. The other side of love learn to include it in your game of life Quan is a ob objectless objectless attention not limited by the ego so when we talk about what area pile number three needs more attention what area of your life needs more of your attention? It could very well be that you need to slow down, to contemplate, to think about, to meditate. And it could very well be with the law of attraction and that card that fell outright face up to put yourself on the top of your own list. If you are um, let's say um, entrepreneur you have a business that business comes first just like a mom and her baby that's your baby right um, your business comes first maybe your employees come first getting those landing those those jobs so that they always have work because you um, are always of mind of them their family their spouses this type of thing and yet because you are that emperor in that emperor energy who puts you first is my question and this is where dolphin says get out there play have fun do something that you love to do pile number three this is the area of your life that needs more of your attention and I believe as the cards you know unfold it's you you need more of your attention Let's see what the fairies have to say. We've already, we, we opened up with a fairy message. This one is 33. A blessing of fairy magic. Ooh, fairy magic. You know I love me some fairy magic. Okay, okay, okay. Let's see, let's see. 33, that is Jesus number. I gotta read that too. Hold on. Whenever 33 comes, I know I've gotta read out of my angel book. 33. 
Master Jesus and his angels are with you. This is a sacred time for growth and healing. And it could very well be for some of you, as I said, whether you're a mom, uh, an entrepreneur, a small business owner, even if you're a CEO, you need to take time to take care of yourself. That's to grow, to expand. Let's see what the fairies have to say about fairy magic. The fairy, the fairy gift of enchantment from the realm of the fae. Fairy magic is a blessing to us all. And in truth, you work with it without even knowing much of the time. When this gift of fairy magic comes to you, let there be a sense that whatever you touch has a spark of magic to it. A little extra life force flowing through the fingers, a little extra depth in the way you see the world, a little extra tastiness to the food you eat, and a little extra kindness to you every day. Yes! Let whatever magic you decide to create have the blessing of the Fae, and that's the law of attraction. So your words and your actions, your wishes and your dreams begin to merge one into another until the inner world is mirrored by the outer world, the law of attraction. Oh my goodness gracious. Pile number three, you, the area of your life that you need to, um, or that requires more of your attention is you. This is clearly, is you. So, your, I'm going to read it again. Your words, your actions, your wishes, and your dreams begin to merge one into the other until the inner world is mirrored by the outer world and you feel you are creating what you desire in your life and aligning closer and closer and closer with the lunar cycles and the solar cycles the growing times and the harvest come closer to the budding and the blooming and the fall of leaf and work within these energies so that what you wish for has its truest chance of actualizing into the world of nature. The natural world is alive and humming with fairy magic and now is blessing this this blessing is offered to you as a co-creation, a ceremony, a desire made action, a blessing that is enchanted. You are a blessing, child of the Fae, and they offer you now their magic. This entry into the natural world so that you too can know the gift of touch that brings life to the world. Blessings of fairy magic to you friend. Oh, that is a beautiful message. And it really does really um, talk about the law of attraction. It's, it's the fairy version. I speak with good intent. Let's take a look at this one. I speak. And as the fairy message says, you speak kindness, good words. These are Enchantments, I speak with good intent. Let's take a look at this one. I speak with sincerity, nope. I speak with, I speak positively with others, nope. I, I have to read every single one because they're not numbered. I speak with good intent, 37. Let's find it. I speak with good intent to speak communicate and converse all with the intention of creation again messages from the fairies and goodness allows the idealized human to embody the archetypal aspects of the magician oh who is able to walk through both the material and spiritual planes with ease channeling universal powers to directly affect the natural world and as the fairies mention affecting from the inside out the natural world. The magician card of tarot, archetypal, and it would be interesting to see if our tarot speaks of this, if the, the magician shows up. We'll find out in just a sec. Um, the magician card of the tarot archetypal, archetypally relates to the planet Mercury, the, cel the celestial sphere, which governs communication and action. Alchemically, this card relates to consciousness of the mind and is embodied, materialized in the mythology of Hermes. 
the thrice great. Hermes of legendary longevity finds um, apotheosis as Thoth to the Egyptians, the creator of medicine, chemistry, law, music, art, rhetoric, magic, philosophy, geography, and more. And as Hermes to the Greek, the character cred credited as the divine fountain of writing, responsible for thousands of occult texts and the creator of Hermetica, a category of ancient papyri which contains spells, invocations, inductions, procedures into mystical realms, recipes for high magic, and complex alchemical formulas. It is also believed that the 42 essential texts containing the compen compendu compendium of his work, Magic and Philosophy, remains hidden in a secret library to this day. In life and afterlife, we're were sacred to the ancients and respected for their great power to make intentions manifest in accordance to the divine desire. In the modern world, may be viewed as vernacular of the visionary, whose desire is to spark the divine from day to day in every dialogue and dimension for whose words is authentically aligned with truth and a promise to hold good intentions. Intentions held in every incarnation iteration and manifestation shimmering in the light of love live as genesis generated with the spirit of the creative heart and the mind of the creator that's a beautiful message pile number three about what you speak into existence and you speak with good intent you speak with truth you speak that which is in line with divine law. So let's find out what the tarot. Now I'm curious to see if the magician shows up. Success is showing up with the six of wands. The tower. Look at that one. Scorpio energy. Mars energy. And the four of pentacles. Rebuilding after a tower moment. Interesting. And the tower could very well also talk about a great success. Interesting. Let's take a look. I want to see all the tarot. The Seven of Wands, right underneath the Six of Wands. So those that might have praised and um, gave you accolades are now sort of going against their own word. Were their words that of good intent? Hmm. Three of Wands, you looking into the future. Five of Pentacles, right after the four, the five, the feeling of loss, and it's right under the tower. And the five of wands. But the five of Pentacles and the five of wands. So we have the five, the six, and the seven of wands on the table. Death, again, scorpionic energy. Death and rebirth into the sun. And do you see the sun in the background, in the background of this card? There it is, right there. And the nine of pentacles, that this death and rebirth has led to your independence, pile number three, and the ending. I'm really picking up from the tarot the ending of this feeling of have not, of holding on to whatever you have, the feeling of loss, of abandonment, of being alone, the feeling of people coming at you, um, this combative energy of you ignoring it all and looking into the future, of defending what it is that you have built, that you stand for, that you speak with good intent against those that might not have your best interest at heart. And thus the purification card. Purifying your mind, your heart energy, your aura, your home from this. I want to, I'm feeling this have not, this, this um, have not energy, this you can't do that. Whatever you think that you can, you know, bring into your life that you speak in, that you that you are receiving blessings, that you, how can you be so happy and playful at this time? There's, 
disaster happening all around you. Like, there's, there's two different camps on the table here. And I feel with the tower being the center of the tarot, that what's going to come crumbling down are the relationships that do not support you fully and completely, that are not there for you when you need them. And with this nine of pentacles right above the tower, you and the sun right above that tower, you have discovered through the transformation, this is Scorpio energy right here. You could be a Scorpio sun, just say. That this independence you have discovered because others haven't been there for you when you needed them. So you are putting yourself, do you notice there's one individual in the Nine of Pentacles, you are putting yourself first, like we said, we, I say we, like I said, when that cup, that fairy card, number 30, came, I almost feel like I should read that one, right side up, it was this energy of putting yourself on the top of your own list, putting yourself first, because you've been putting others first that wouldn't put you first pile number three. So the area of your life that requires your full attention right now is you. Is you and your manifestations. Is you and what you're attracting into your life. And then contemplating about what it is you've attracted thus far. Right? And making the changes. And that's what the death card is about. Making the changes required. So I am going to say the doors between the worlds are swinging, and this is the, the card that fell on the floor. The doors between the worlds will swing wide open for you, fairy friend, and this is a blessing. For when you dwell on in the blessings of Litha energy, plenty, beauty, spontaneity, love, and joy can be yours. Let the present moment expand. Let the ripeness of your life speak to you, and may you make the very most of this life you've been blessed with this day, no matter what time it is, friend. The blessing of Litha is with you now. May you enjoy them to the fullest degree. Yes. So let's, I want to read these cards, these middle ones, Six of Wands, because I feel, especially with the seven wands below the six of wands, like you experienced success and then they came at you. Where then you were taking the higher road, you then saw their, their true, you know, whoever they, this, it could be family, it could be uh, co-workers, it could be, uh, I don't know, friends, it could be um, really uh, employees even. Whoever this means to you, friendships, let's say. They're now, they've turned. They were praising you with the Six of Wands and then they turn. I'm really feeling that this Seven of Wands is talking about you taking the high road, pile number three, going through that realization, the tower moments of who's really supporting you and who's just waiting for you to fail or for you to, um, I don't know, waiting. I don't know, for you to fail. All I see is them waiting for you to lose maybe your uh, job or your status or your, I don't know, relationship. Because they're, it's almost like they're, what is it called when they're chomping at the bit? I don't know. I, it's, it's like that energy of just waiting to pick up your pieces. Um, and, and yet you've moved on or rebuilding with the Four of Pentacles. Like, I don't even need any of you. I've got the Nine of Pentacles right here. This has come to a painful end, but an end it must be. This is really what I'm picking up from the tarot. And so then it, it, the contemplation card, it asks you to ask yourself, pile number three, what are you attracting? What magic are you finding within that you can then manifest on the outside this is beautiful i'm really this is very transformational energy so i want to read the middle of that that um the tower that card right there the tower awakening a cat catastrophe, destruction, illumination, some obstacles to enlightenment are dense yet imp 
permeable? Yes. Like invisible walls, they prevent us from moving forward despite the appearance of a clear path. When we've been duped, yes, that's what I felt, by these hidden obstructions, and wrathful a wrathful protector may come to our defense. The scorpion sting forcibly wakes us to reality and its pincers shear away what has been holding us back. Yes, the tower indicates a sudden catastrophic event that leaves us questioning everything, like a lightning, like a bolt of lightning that pierces the night sky, a flash of insight that can break through darkness and illusion. In this time of upheaval, the scorpion spirit encourages you not to resist the change. Allow its venom to run its course. Let it destroy that which does not serve you. Yes, indeed, so there is space for something new to emerge. This is what your reading is about, pile number three. Absolutely. Yes, let's do the six of wands. See what they were celebrating with you and then turned on you. And then you found out. And through the death process and the tower. See, the death process is, is happens naturally, a, a natural transition. But when you don't listen, when you ignore it, when you second guess it, that's when the tower happens. And it's for your best interest. When you look back at those tower moments, you're like, you know what? That was really the best thing that could have ever happened to me. And thank the Lord. And thank your your higher power, your 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 higher self for letting those changes happen, even though they were painful endings, but letting them happen, six of wands. Wow, I'm loving this for you, pile number three. A beetle of sapphire and gold stands triumphant on a rock surrounded by five others. In this victorious moment, it has the attention of all. Recognize what you've accomplished and welcome the praise you're currently receiving. Externally, Validation feels wonderful, but do not let it be your only source of worth, as the Seven of Swords will remind you. There will come a time when your shine will fade and you'll no longer stand above. How then might you, how then might you feel worthy? See, this is where attachment, not being attached to the glory that other people get, the likes, the hits, the s subscribers, the whatever, that you do, and again, speak with good intent, and that you manifest what it is you truly desire, regardless of what's going on around you. Four of Pentacles. The Four of Pentacles. Rebuilding after the tower, rebuilding after a painful ending, but you have the ability to do so with the Nine of Pentacles. This is independence, this is happiness, the sun right above the tower. It was the best thing for you, pile number three. It was the best thing for you. Wealth, accumulation, the Four of Pentacles, um, a masked coon closely guards his treasure. He tightly clutches one possession and places a foot firmly on another, paralyzed by the fear of loss. He's no longer in control. His constant quest to collect has left him feeling stuck. There is wisdom in money management and saving for the future, but be careful not to lose focus on what's most important. Shiny things will not replace something missing within, and it goes back to the law of attraction. Pile number three, you need to focus on you. You need to focus in on um, soul work, on that work that requires you to discover what it is you love, to be playful in this process, even though you're experiencing towers, ten of swords, and the death card, but in on the same spread, you're experiencing the six of wands, the sun, nine of pentacles, right? So there's this very much balance of um, positive and negative at the same time. This is what change is about, going from um, what would be perceived as a negative into and transmuting into positive. That's very scorpionic. So you need to focus in on you. That's where, uh, pile number three, the area of your life that requires your attention, sweet pile number three, it's you. And that's what I see for you. And I'm sure I'll see you again. Take care from your forest fairy. Bye for now.